Okay, hello everyone. Sorry for the delay, there's been an IT issue. Um, so there's quite a few of you guys here. Um, just some general housekeeping. If you have any questions, um, you can ask in the Q&A or the chat. Um, but I'm just going to start by sharing the screen. So today we're going to go through abstract reasoning and some quantitative reasoning. Okay. So to start with, how confident do you guys feel with abstract reasoning? Okay, let me know in the chat. Um, and when are your exam dates, guys? Okay, so six, over here at Six Med, we've taught over 10,000 students over the last six years. Um, and we have a range of services from uh, these surgery webinars to UCAT support, personal statement support, and interview support. So we offer services throughout the application cycle. A little bit about me. So I'm a medical student at UCL. I'm a clinical student, meaning I'm in my latter three years based in the hospital. And I've been an admissions tutor for three years. Okay. So hopefully at this point, you guys feel somewhat uh, confident or, you know, fairly confident in AR. I know it's a tricky section. And for a lot of you guys who haven't done um, aspects of uh, like these types of exams, for example, if you haven't done the 11 plus, it might seem really unfamiliar, but don't worry, I didn't do the 11 plus and I managed to do fine in AR. The main issue I would say is the timing. So you have 50 questions in 12 minutes. That gives you 14 seconds per question. Okay. In reality, it works more that for a set, for example, in type one questions or type four questions, you have one minute to do the set. So say you have about 40 seconds to figure out the pattern, then 15 seconds to uh, fill in your answers. Can anyone think of why it might be important to have good AR skills as a doctor? And just let me know in the chat. Okay, so just let me know in the chat or um, if you want to raise your hand, uh, uh, Sabina, or what do you think? Um, I think the chat is disabled. Oh, okay. No wonder you guys <laughs> seemed very, very quiet. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just talk out loud. Um, so just off the top of your head, guys, how might the skills you need for AR apply for in your day-to-day -day as a doctor um ddh sorry your name isn't listed there what do you think uh, hi i'm dev uh it's for pattern recognition mm -hmm. exactly pattern recognition and you knew this throughout your day-to-day -day life as a doctor for example when you're diagnosing a patient how do you know what what symptoms are linked? Because it could be they have a broken leg by coincidence, but that has nothing to do with their fever and their rash. Okay, so being able to figure out what's a distractor and what are actually part of the, his symptoms that make up, you know, the disease that you need to investigate. Um, for scans like MRI, uh, radiographs, how do you figure out what parts? What you know what strange things you see that are just part of normal human variation versus what is pathological okay um, and also being able to do this very fast and efficiently um also in data analysis okay and these are all things that you will experience in your day-to-day -day life as a doctor 
Okay. Another thing is that they've scrapped the BMAT. So that means the UCAT is your one shot when it comes to admissions exams. Um, so it might be a little bit more daunting compared to previous years. Um, let's. I'm guessing you guys are all familiar with um the question type. Can anyone tell me? Can everyone whose exam is in the next three weeks raise your hand just so I can get an idea? Okay, 12 of you. So I'm guessing for the rest of you, your exam is in September. Okay. Perfect. And can anyone who's done more than three weeks of revision for the UCAT raise their hand? Just so I get a gist of what stage you guys are at. Okay, about 11 of you, perfect. I would recommend at a minimum, you want to do six weeks, I would say. But that's as um, like very much a minimum. Ideally, you would do more. Um, and if you're doing six weeks, I would say it needs to be very intense six weeks of practice. I know there's always someone that says that, oh yeah, I studied for two weeks and I got a 900. That's just not the reality for 99.9% .9 of you guys. So I would say, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Start as early as possible, especially right now. You guys don't have school. So, I mean, I, I remember I was practicing um, like well before the academic year ended. So it's really important you guys practice. There are four question types. Majority of your questions will be type one. That's your, you know, your standard six shapes from A, six shapes from B, you get five questions and you have to decide each of the five boxes, whether they're from A, B or neither. Neither means it either doesn't have the pattern for either or it had it fits the pattern for both, in which case it's neither. So if it matches both boxes, it's neither. Type two is where you have a series of shapes. Uh, so you have four shapes and you have to identify which shape is next in the series. Type three is when you have a statement about a shape and you have to complete the statement. So what A is to B, C is to D. So you have to figure out what the pattern is or the rule is and apply that to another shape. And type four is very similar to type one, except instead of having five questions that you decide A, B or neither, you get four options and you're told which is from A, which is from B, okay? So majority of your questions will be in type one. Type one and type four, you have about one minute to complete the set, whereas for type two and three, you have about 15 seconds. Okay. So common patterns. Uh, what I recommend is looking at A and B generally, see if you notice anything, especially the more visual patterns like straight versus curvy, um, symmetrical, um, you know, those, those sorts of patterns you tend to be able to pick up um, just by comparing generally looking over a and b if that doesn't work take the two simplest in a look at what they have in common and if you find something for example they both have in common that they have two shapes see if all the rest have two shapes and if that's the case then b should have a different number of shapes and therefore you've got your pattern okay when you're looking at your two simplest boxes in a or b just make sure that um you know maybe spend five seconds seeing if anything stands out if not use the acronym S N S P C C, okay. So that's number, size, position, color, conformation, and there's various patterns within that. So for example, with number, it could be number of sides, the number of shapes, the number of black shapes, the number of corners, the right, number of right angles, the number of curved shapes. Okay. I would say, for the sake of time, and also um, just because it more often than not is a simpler pattern, start off with things that are easy to determine. Okay, so it's easy to see if something is straight versus curved. It's easy to see um to count the number of shapes. Okay, so it's unlikely to be these very niche patterns where it's like, um, you know, the number of corners are in multiples of three. It's more likely to do be something more obvious. So start with those. Okay, I'll give you guys a second to just copy this down. We'll take a screenshot. And we're going to have a go at some practice questions. Okay. 
And for the practice questions, I'm just going to get you guys to raise your hands um, because we don't have our chat box. Okay, so for this question, I'm going to give you, uh, I'll time you one minute, but I'll give you a little bit more. Okay, so start now. That's 30 seconds. Hopefully you found the pattern by now. Okay, so that was about a minute. Can any, everyone, let's start with the first one. Can everyone that chose A for the first one raise their hand? Let's have a look. That's 16 of you. Can anyone that chose B? Raise their hand. C. Okay, a handful of you guys chose C. All righty. So let's start with the pattern. So does anyone want to be brave and tell me what the pattern is? Yeah, it's quite a visual one, so hopefully most of you guys got this one. Okay, Ethan. So, Ethan, what's the pattern? Okay, um, maybe. Okay. Or Noral Huda, what's the pattern? Um, it's just curvy versus straight shapes. Exactly. So this is one of those ones that if you just kind of glaze your eyes over A and B generally, hopefully you should be able to figure it out pretty fast. Um, and if not, then I would take the two simplest in A, for example, A2 and A6, think hmm, what do they have in common they have one shape that's not common to all of a oh they have curvy lines comparing the other six oh they all have curvy lines and then look at b oh they have straight lines so you're correct it's straight versus curvy lines um especially one way that um obviously this is quite uh, an easy one but uh in the more complex ones i uh, there's something called triggers which you can learn and i suggest all of you guys make a list of triggers so for example when they start using shapes like the crescent moon and the heart um and the f like wavy flag um the stop sign any all these shapes with curvy uh lines usually that's a sign that there's something to do with curvy sides because say this one they only use circles and a couple uh, moons and ovals so it's quite obvious but when they use you know other curvy shape um uh curvy shapes it's less obvious so when i see things like hearts or just a lot of the random um curved shapes that they don't really use that suggests to me that is something about curvy lines okay so build up a list of triggers um that you can review and that will help you get faster okay so for the second one could everyone who raised their hand for a uh, could everyone who chose a raise their hand 
Okay, B. And neither. Exactly, because this one, it's neither because it fits both. It has curved sides and it has straight sides. Okay, now let's have a go at the third one. So everyone who chose A, raise their hand. B, raise your hand. And C, raise your hand. Okay, so the good thing is most of you guys are getting the correct answer. So you're correct. For the third one, it's set B because it only has straight lines. Now let's have a go at the fourth one. So everyone that chose A, raise their hands. B, raise your hands. And neither, raise your hands. Okay, so almost everyone got the correct answer for this one. It's A. I know it looks a bit weird, but at the end of the day, the rule is straight or curvy, and it only has curvy uh, sides. So it is A. Right, now let's have a go at some type two questions. So for this one, I won't give you 15 seconds. I think that's a bit harsh, um, especially because your exams are weeks away. But have a go at this one. Okay, and everyone that chose A, raise your hand. Everyone that chose B, raise your hand. Everyone that chose C, raise your hand. And everyone that chose D, raise your hand. Okay, so most of you guys got the correct answer, which is C. The reason being, so what I would have done is just notice, okay, the shapes are rotating. Let me just stick on one. So um, I can see that there's basically a black and white square and a black and white triangle. Um, and they're changing position. So let's start with the white circle. It goes from right up left down so i know the white circle is going to be in the right position and that narrows me down to b or c so immediately within a few seconds i've got a 50 50 chance at this point i feel like there's no point going back to the sequence and think you know figuring out every little change because usually there's quite a few patterns instead i would look at b and c and think well what's different about b and c i notice the position of the white and black square is different so therefore that's the only other thing that i need to suss out so looking back at my sequence i can see that the um the black square goes from up down down up whereas the white square goes from uh left left right right so i know the white square will be on the left again giving me c so you look quite complex, but I would figure out one pattern, then eliminate and see what's different about the rest of my answers. And that will get you to the answer faster. Let's have a go at this sequence. Uh, ignore the red dot, that's just someone's pen mark. Okay, this one should be quite easy. Everyone that chose A, raise your hand. Everyone that chose B, raise your hand. Everyone that chose C, raise your hand. And everyone that chose D, raise your hand. Okay, perfect. So pretty much everyone chose A. First things first, I would say it goes from no dot, dot, no dot, dot. So really and truly, I'm looking at A or D. From looking at A or D, I can tell it's something to do with orientation of the arrow. I can see that the arrow moves in 45 degrees clockwise, and therefore it's going to be 
be facing downwards. So the correct answer is A. So let's have a go at a type three question. All right. So it would have which of the figures complete the statement? You choose between one and four. Okay, so everyone that chose A, raise your hand. Yeah, everyone that chose B, raise your hands. Everyone that chose C, raise your hand. And everyone that chose D, raise your hand. Okay. So, this one, it seems like you guys are a little stuck on this between B and C. The correct answer is C. Uh, to start with, I can see how the outer shape becomes the inner shape and switches color, so from black to white. And that's why in the in the second shape you can see a very small black, uh, small white circle, right? So I know there's going to be a black uh, square in the middle, so I've got a white square as my outer shape. So therefore, without even having to check the rest, I know the answer is C. However, if you want to have a look at the like other reasons, um, I know the black uh, circle at the top kind of rotates to, I mean, there's three shapes. It rotates anti-clockwise um, to like anti-clockwise by a third. And the same thing happens to the black triangle in our shape. It needs to rotate anti-clockwise up a third and go to that corner which leaves us with C or D. But I know it's not D because I know that outer shape is not a triangle. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I think for the sake of time, we're going to skip that one because it's pretty much the same as type one questions. Right. So some top tips. Again, it's all about time. You have to think every point is worth the same. So there's no point spending ages on one set when in that time you could do two other sets. Um, another thing, uh, when you're practicing, you should try and, you know, look for one or the second pattern. But majority of the sets will not have a second pattern. So it's not worth spending time looking for a secondary pattern when that might just change your score out of five by one. Okay. Oftentimes you can get at least a, th a three, if not a four or five um, in that set with just the primary pattern. So once you have one pattern, go through it, do your answer and move on. If you have time at the end, that's when I would look for a secondary pattern. Um, use your acronyms. Um, and once you've figured out something is not a pattern or it is in fact a distractor, make sure you discard it and continue with um, your uh, like search for the correct pattern. If you're stuck, don't be afraid to guess flag skip. Oftentimes there's the students that aren't perfectionists and aren't afraid to guess flag skip that are able to do well on this exam, okay? So, I know um, you guys couldn't really answer in the beginning because of the chat box. Um, I won't make you answer. I know sometimes people get a bit shy about talking about like how confident they are, what scores they're getting, but 
Does everyone understand the overview of the exam and how to do the exam? Okay, going to have a go at the second uh, section that we're discussing today, which is, uh, one second, which is QR. So can everyone let me know in the chat whether they're more confident, they're more confident in QR than AR? Okay, it seems like most of you guys prefer abstract reasoning. Okay, so I won't introduce myself again, but let's have a go at some QR. So similarly to the last section, we're going to introduce QR, go through some top tips and practice questions, and then we'll have some time for a Q&A. Um, unfortunately, the chat box isn't working, so you're going to have to raise your hands for that. Um, so, I just want you guys to think about how confident you are. I'm going to ask um, if you're more confident by the end of the Q&A. Okay, so just have a think about where you are. Obviously, if you're kind of one or two, you would need to uh, really amp up your revision. All right. So there's various question types. Uh, in fact, I was teaching, I had a student today between 8 to 10 a.m., um and we were going through a couple question types so i would say the ones people tend to struggle on are the interest tax questions um the venn diagram questions um what else i think sometimes speed distance time ratio those tend to be the ones that students struggle with okay so essentially um you have 36 questions in 24 minutes. So it's definitely a time crunch, but it's not as much of a time crunch as VR or AR, okay? Uh, I would say with QR, the number one thing I would recommend to everyone is just make sure you go through all the easy questions first, and then you can come back to the harder ones. So there's a major out of 36, I would say at least 28 questions will be easy stuff that you can, it's like adding things, finding the mean, finding the mode, um you know finding the mean and then multiplying it by something you know quick basic math that you can definitely do in 45 seconds um so get those questions done and then guess flag skip the harder ones and that way you will have time to come back to those questions okay so a couple formulae to remember speed equals distance over time one mile is 1.6 kilometers with probability, oh, this is an important one. If I ask you, what's the probability of rolling a six and a three? You have to multiply the numbers. The reason being is when you multiply um, numbers below one, for essentially decimals below one, you the number gets smaller, right? Because you're multiplying it by less than one, okay? And logically, if I ask you to roll a six and a three, that's less likely than just rolling a six. So that's how I always remembered it. The fact that if I roll a six and a three, I'm less likely to do that than to just roll a six, okay? And therefore I need to multiply it because my chances are lower. Whereas if I ask you to roll a six or a three, I have two desirable outcomes. And therefore I add up the, chance of or the probability of rolling a six to the probability of rolling a three okay um hopefully that's clear to everyone percentage change it just change over original times 100 really important to be able to remember what the original is okay a lot of QR is just being fast, not being perfectionist and being good at mental math um those of you who have tried out the UCAT calculator know it's the most basic of basic calculators and it's very difficult um, to be able to use fast. So mental math is really important and also rounding. So for example, if my answers are really far apart, like 500, 550, 675, 800, so on and so forth, I know the numbers are so far apart that I can start estimating and rounding. That will save me a lot of time. Whereas if my numbers are 56, 57, 58, 59, 
I now know that I can't round and I can't estimate, but say if I need to find the mean, I just need, because the last digit is different in each of my answers, instead of adding up, um, say, a bunch of four digit numbers, I just add up the last digit. And um, if I need to find the mean, I divide that last digit by the number of di um, uh, numbers, and then I find the mean. So when you're not, if I'm not sure if I'm explaining it clearly, but when your answers all have a different di last digit and they're all close in value, you can just calculate the what the last digit would be. For example, if you're adding up a series of numbers, just add up the last digit and that will get you to your answer faster. Okay, so for the following questions, I will, I'll tell you when you've had 45 seconds, but I'll give you a bit more time. Um, Let's have a go at this question. Okay, and that is 45 seconds. I'll give you guys a bit more time. Okay, so it's been one minute 15. I'll just give you 10 more seconds. Okay, so everyone that chose A, can you raise your hand? Everyone that chose B, can you raise your hand? Everyone that chose C, can you raise your hand? And everyone that chose D, can you raise your hand? Everyone that chose E, can you raise your hand? Okay, so my numbers are far apart, so I can approximate. Um, it seems like most of you guys are a bit confused on this question. Um, essentially, what I would do is I would just kind of eyeball things. So I would think, okay, well, there's 12 months and uh, there's 24 stick so whatever my average is i am going to divide it um by 24 okay so then um look at how many dvd and blu-ray units were sold over the year um so then i would kind of eyeball things and think oh you know what um for each one it's give or take let's say 600, 500, 600, okay? When I multiply that by 12, it gives me a number that's closest to E, okay? That's how I would do it. So I'd do like 600-ish, give or take, uh, bearing in mind that some months are around 1,000. As a modest estimate, 600, Divide by 12, round up a bit, and that gives me E. Let's have a go at this question. In the final quarter of the year, how many more DVD units were sold compared with Blu-ray units?
Okay, that's 45 seconds. Okay, so I've given you two minutes, which is plenty of time. Everyone that chose A, raise your hand. Everyone that chose B, raise your hand. Everyone that chose C, raise your hand. And everyone that chose D, raise your hand. Everyone that chose E, raise your hand. Okay, so the most popular answer was A. I think that with this one, the easiest thing to do is just do 290 plus 42 plus 628 minus uh, 3, 237 minus 355 minus 413. Okay. Okay, let's have a go at this question. Okay, that's 45 seconds. I'll give you a little bit more time. Okie dokie, that's about one and a half minutes. Everyone that chose A, raise their hand. Everyone that chose B, raise their hands. Okay.
Oh, wow. Okay, most of you. Um, C, raise your hands. D, raise your hands. And E, raise your hands. Okay, I think pretty much everyone got the correct answer, which is B. Essentially, um, percentage increase, you can just do it as those that did DVD the, over those that did Blu-ray will be one point something. That will be the percentage increase. Yeah, and that's for December. Um, let's have a go at this question. Okay, so that's one minute. Um, everyone that chose A, raise your hand. B, raise your hand. C, raise your hand. And D, raise your hand. E, raise your hand. Okay. I'd say 85% of you that answered, answered correctly, which is C. Um, I think a lot of you didn't answer, so it seems like a lot of you didn't uh, finish the question in time. Um, remember, with the QR section, all of you guys can do the math. It's about doing the math in time. So just finding shortcuts, finding ways to get a bit faster will help you a lot. Um, so I think another easy mistake here is to only calculate January instead of January and February. Uh, yeah okay that's quite a common type of question um do you guys want to have a go at another question stem or do you want to move on because we do you need time for the q a okay anyone that wants to do another question raise your hand Okay, and anyone that wants to do a Q&A? Okay, oh, okay. So I think most of you guys want to do another question. Let's have a go at this question. Okay, a little bit more time.
Okie dokie, everyone that chose A, raise your hand. B, raise your hand. C, raise your hand. <coughs> D, raise your hand. And E, raise your hand. Okay, so most of you guys got the correct answer, which is C. Derek is looking to book a holiday to America. He has saved four thousand five hundred seventy dollars for his trip. Given that one one dollar is worth sixty nine pound sixty nine pence, calculate how many dollars Derek will have for the trip. This is a very easy and quick calculation. Just do four five seven zero divided by. 0.69 so whenever you have a conversion where um what you have is um like less than 100 percent. for example if it's like a percentage change or an item on sale and you're trying to find the 100 percent value just divide it by zero point blah 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 okay so once you do that the correct answer is c and that should be a question that takes you maybe i don't know 15 seconds and that way it saves time for the longer ones let's have a go at probability question I want to say, assume the probability that he pulls out any particular suite is the same. It's basically saying that each suite is, is not like a biased bag, if that makes sense. Okay, and this is another fairly simple one. So everyone that chose A, raise your hand. Everyone that chose B, raise your hand. C, raise your hand. And D, raise your hand. E, raise your hand. Okay, pretty much everyone chose C. So this is a nice and easy one. 50 plus 30 plus 20 is 100. Um, and there's 30 red, so 30 over 100 can be simplified to 3 over 10. Okay. So, I think figuring out when it's a good idea to estimate versus a good idea to round, uh, use your calculator is a skill. Um, okay, the Q&A, yes, okay, the Q&A does work. Um, only I realised that earlier. Okay, um, a quick note, we do have bundles at 6Med, uh, so right now some of you guys might be particularly interested in the UCAT tutoring bundle, um, so this is when you have a 6Med tutor, um, you can request me by name, my name is Hanifa Kabir, um, or you can choose another tutor they'll give you, um, and you'll basically go through the UCAT sections together. There's also an interview uh, tutorial bundle. So I mainly do um interview prep. I mean, I do I do UCAT and interview. Uh, but back when we had the BMAT, I used to say I mainly do UCAT and interview. But now it's the only two sections, so I do both. Um, there's also a medicine mastery bundle, which is a bundle which includes both, but also it has a guarantee that you'll get a place in medical school, or they'll continue working with you until that point. Okay. So, um, can you guys raise your hand if you feel a bit more confident with QR? Okay, I'm very happy to hear that, guys. And yes, this meeting is recorded. Um, I'm not sure if you're allowed PowerPoint slides. I'm not really told of that information. Um, but if there's a particular slide you'd like me to go back on, let me know. I'm just going to go through the Q&A.
Okay. Someone said their exam isn't booked as the bursary scheme isn't working for me. Okay. I, okay. You need to contact their, you know, chat line or customer service about that. I had a friend who used the bursary scheme and um, they managed to get their date the same time as everyone else. Um, so I'm sure there's a reason for the delay, but um, one thing I you could look into, if the bursary scheme doesn't work, um, a lot of the time your university will be quite happy to pay the cost of the exam um, because obviously they know like financial situations and all of that. So it's definitely something I would look into. Um, I know people, um, and I didn't go to like a particularly good school or anything, but they still um, paid for some of my friends, UCATs. Uh, okay. Um, I would say book your exam for at least after six months of practice, if not eight or more. Um, if you have mocks in, you know, UCAS relevant mocks in September, that's something to bear in mind. But if you don't have mocks or the mocks are just internal, I would say it's okay to do your UCAT during term time. How do you even revise? I would recommend getting Medify uh, and just doing as many questions as you can. And also when you're reviewing, make sure you actively review. So when you get a question wrong, don't just think, oh yeah, yeah I'll get that next time. Think, oh, okay, I missed this because of this. Really think about why you missed it. Um, for AR, one thing I did is for each of the types of patterns, so shape, pat uh, shape, color, position, blah, 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 I had a page in my notebook. And when I'd miss a pattern, I'd write down the rule in my book so I could regularly review them. That way I'm more familiar with them and I'm less likely to miss it next time. Okay. Um, and also actively use the strategy. So glaze your eyes over A and B for like five, 10 seconds. Focus on the two simplest in A. You know, if that doesn't work, uh, you can use your acronym. Okay. I'm getting I would say Medify is most accurate. Um, I would say Medify QR can be harder. Um, but yeah, I would say don't so much focus on scores. I know it's easier said than done. More focus on, you know, are you getting the questions you used to get wrong right? And I would say for now, just focus on your raw score. So how many out of 36 you're getting right, for example. What UCAT score did you get and what score should we expect in mock exams at the moment? Again, it depends on how much practice you've done, what resources you're using. I got a 2,800 and something band one. Um, but um, my I, my main focus was the BMAT uh, because I wanted to go UCL. <coughs> Do you think four weeks is enough time to revise? Uh, honestly, no, unless you're doing like, you know, a solid 12 hours a day. I, if you what I would do if you guys feel like you've booked your exam a bit too early just have the uh, page to reschedule open on your phone and maybe every hour just refresh it see if you can find another spot okay that's what I did because I ended up uh, changing my date uh okie dokie perfect um I would I've used Medify um I never use med entry um what was my best section? Uh, I think my best section was decision making. It was decision making and QR. I think decision making, I got like an 800 something. And QR, I got a just an 800, something like that. Um, we do, but for verbal reason, I'm terrible. English is not my first language. Um, they probably won't overlook that. Um, unless, if you're an international student, they might. I would say there are scores that um, they take the total score into consideration. So if your average balance is out, that's fine. There are other scores that take into account like SJT and AR, for example. So really research into what each university uses to decide who gets an interview. Um, if your UCAT score isn't increasing after five weeks, I would say you need to actively figure out why you're not improving. Um, it sounds to me that you're just doing a lot of guesswork and you're not improving your strategy itself. Um, Okay. Yeah, I would say if you're not satisfied with your score, it's better to reschedule, in my opinion. That's what I did. I rescheduled to a further um two weeks ahead, and I really uh that made me feel a lot more confident. 
Okay. All righty. Any other questions? All right. So you don't have any questions, feel free to leave. Well done for today, guys. Uh, when I say review, um, I mean, when you're checking which answers you got wrong, figure out actually why did you get it wrong? Okay, bye guys. Well done for today. Okay. Um, could you still get a good score if you mess up on one sub desk? Yes, but obviously your score will be a bit lower. Uh, ideal UCAT revision section. I would have a daily quota of like, I need to do this many of each type. And then after you get that quota, the rest of the day, you focus on one uh, section. Or even within that section, you focus on, uh, on Medify, you can filter it to specific sub quests, like, question types so i would have a quota so you're doing uh you know a reasonable amount each day of each section then for the rest of the day i would focus on um one subsection okay um, no worries guys hope you enjoyed it okay bye bye